What's up, Three Pound Nation? Oh, it's gonna be a beautiful day. Bluebird day, so it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be really interesting to see how this day starts. Um, we gotta catch our fish early. Typically, we gotta stay away from that type of thing. But anyway, I am happy that you joined me. And uh, I haven't done an intro like this in a while where we're actually in the vehicle, right? Outside, it's early. And uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go over some of the accessories in my boat that complements live scope in this episode. I'm gonna show you about just the little things that, you know, you don't necessarily get in the box with live scope that helps it get done. So I'll also show you some active captain in this episode. So stick with me. We're gonna put some big fish in the boat. It's a summer episode. Thanks for joining me. Let's get this thing done. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies. All right, folks, this is going to be summer fishing at its finest. We're going to talk about some of the things that I have in my boat that complements live scope. That's everything from mounts to just extra gadgets that I keep to make sure that it gets done during a day of fishing. So thanks for joining me. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Um, got hair jigs, got lids for sale at 3poundfishing.com. Check them out. Um, it's going to be a really busy summer with guide trips, but if you have an interest, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out at 3poundfishing at gmail.com. Man, we're going to have some good times. We're going to put some slabs in the boat. That's what's the most important. So thanks for joining me. And we're off and rolling. Let's get this done. You know, when I go out and fish by myself, I, uh, I guess I try some different places, places I don't typically fish. I'm trying to find that next great spot for the guide trips. Kind of my always my target um, so that's what we're doing today I also think it makes you a better fisherman when you try things that you don't typically do Ooh! look at this tank look at this tank first fish of the day boy he's running gonna get this in the boat before BAM that was a tank that's a first fish good morning that's what that is that's a good morning that's what we're gonna call that one a good morning so let's talk about some of the things that are accessories to your live scope first and foremost the mounts very important I I have a, a great relationship with cornfield crappie gear I believe in their stuff I think that uh, they were first to the market essentially for these live scope and all these monitors and everything for the crappie industry and I think um, they're good they're good quality and Mark's a stand-up guy he's gonna back his product so I have the folding mount I like it because it can fold out of the way it sits on top of the bridge mount and they have a enormous amount of selection for uh, your live scope transducer the live sweep uh, the cable saver um, a lot of mounts that accommodate one two I believe even three monitors so check out cornfield crappie gear that as far as an accessory goes is probably number one. Where do you want your screen positioned? I used to have it down on, on the ground and now I have it up here in my face, which I really do appreciate. So check them out and uh, consider where that location is gonna go because I'll tell you, when it's way down there on the on the floor, really difficult to, to pick up things. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be and uh, that helps out a ton. Also, I think helps out with glare because I can actually block the glare coming in from behind. fish here man I'll tell you what they're being stingy today that post spawn bite man early summer it's a good fish though we'll take it good size eater okay, so what other accessories do you need for live scoping well let's talk about it. maybe it's not an accessory maybe let's just call it you need some extra stuff in your boat I always carry um, a red and a black wire uh, if you saw those episodes from table rock you'll see that we actually used it um, if you ever have a power problem with your live scope and you're out there planning on a great day of fishing and all of a sudden you don't have power um, a quick answer to that is stringing power across your deck back to your batteries immediately right back to your batteries that way you're not you're not uh, ruining a whole day of fishing so I keep one full roll of black one full roll of red 
and uh, even at Table Rock, we had to disconnect uh, the power to the, I think it was the, I'm not sure if it was the, just the monitor or what, but we had to bring the power all the way back to the battery. And we were fishing within, you know, 15 minutes. We wasted only 15 minutes because of that. Um, great experience. I'll link that episode here above. But so a little extra stuff. So black, white, uh, black and red wire, but also maybe an extra network cable. Um, so I use, they have like a female male uh, adapter ends. I have a couple of extras of those. I also have a couple extra of the mounts that go on the trolling motor because you'd be amazed if you run into something, you could snap that off. And I did that at Lake of the Pines. And so now I carry four extra of those in my boat. They're only, you know, they're $8. Why not have a little extra in your boat in case one of these things happen? Tools are important so that you can do those type of changes. So throw extra stuff in the boat to complement your live scope so that if you run into a problem, you still can fish. Man, I thought you were a lot bigger. He came off that uh, a stump down there. Let's do some active captain. Good fish though. Let's attempt to do some active captain. This isn't typically a spot that I would do active captain on because they're kind of scattered, but, and I guess if it's not good, you won't see this. All right, so that's my image right now. That's what I'm looking at. Uh, scrolling around here just a little bit. See, see how they're kind of up on that ledge? I, you know, in this situation, I kind of, I don't mind throwing it out there 30 feet and rolling over that ledge. You'll see it coming in here right now. My picture's kind of dirty, but there it is coming in. You can see it's clear as day. Um, and I'll just roll right over that edge. And uh, see these guys that are coming to come over right on top right now. There they are right there. I'll come right over the stump even. Yep, here comes one. And there he was. Well, that was the, he just got off. I didn't set the hook hard enough, but uh, that was a solid fish. But that's, that's something I would do. Uh, rolling it, rolling it right over that edge. And uh, you'd be amazed by what pokes up when you do that. So there's that ledge, fish are on top of it. That's about 30 feet out. There's fish down there, you can see. I mean, that's, I'm waiting for myself to come into the picture here. And when I don't see myself coming into the picture, I go ahead and I just start reeling anyway, when I think it's down there because you don't have to see yourself. There I am way up there, you see that? All right, I wanted to show you an example of something. I hopefully, hopefully I can show you. See this stump here? Not many fish on it, right? A lot of times, a lot of times those fish will hide inside those those roots. And so we drop. We don't have necessarily. There I am, right there, coming into the picture right now. Not a lot of fish on this stump, but something you'd just be surprised what will poke itself out. There's one that poked out, and he got it. How about that? Isn't that hilarious? So, not many fish on that stump, but what you're doing is you're anticipating that there are fish probably sitting inside that uh, those roots. That's a good fish. So a lot of people have been asking, when's the next uh, tournament for Marcus and I? And uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna wait till the national championship at the Crappie Masters. We're also going to be doing the uh, obviously the local Crappie Masters event, but also the Wally Marshall event on Red River. So that's somewhat up in the air because we just that's just so far out. But uh, those are our next three events. Will be the last three events of the year, and those start in September. So if you're in Louisiana. For, at Darbone, which I'm totally excited about that. We had a good turnout, a good turnout in terms of competitors, but also we did fairly well in that event. So we're totally excited about going back to Darbone. Um, 
check us out. You guys can visit us at the uh, Darbone Way Inn and all that stuff. Love to talk crappie with whoever would love to, to do that. And then Red River, of course, Red River is just a fantastic uh, event. Wally Marshall puts on a great event and uh, check us out there as well. So those are the ne next events for Marcus and I, and uh, hopefully we'll meet up with a bunch of you at those, uh, those events. Well, folks, that's gonna end it today. Man, we put some big fish in the boat. That was fantastic. And uh, all those little things for live scope, those little extras, the mounts, the extras you keep in your boat. Right there, folks. Will do you good. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. Hey, a little bonus footage. For those that are asking where Three Pound Fishing is located, Southern Illinois. So if you're interested in the guide service, uh, thanks for staying first off to the end of the episode, but also Three Pound Fishing Guide Service is located in Southern Illinois next to Marion, Illinois. Uh, we've got numerous lakes around here, Wren Lake, uh, Wren Lake, Kincaid, Lake of Egypt, uh, and that guide service accommodates all of those lakes. So if you're interested, you can call me at 618-694-5162, but also 3poundfishing at gmail.com. You can just email me if you're interested in that guide service. Thanks again for staying to the end. And because of that, we're gonna put another fish in the boat. Hair jig, man, you switch up to a hair jig and boom, you get yourself a small eater, but a fish. Thanks again, folks.